Good evening students. Today we come to talk about the visual pathway. It will serve as a stepping stone in understanding visual fields. So what is visual pathway? It all narrows down to how we see. Okay, how we see. Okay, let me just delve into this that those of you who do fundoscopy and don't know your way about this is the optic disc and that is the fovea and this is the macula okay around the fovea you have the macula so automatically this becomes the right eye because the macula is temporal and the disc is what nasal so why am i showing this picture i'm showing it because remember that the retina contains ganglion cells and the ganglion cells come together to form the optic nerve the most superficial part of the optic nerve is called what the optic disc so all the ganglion cells on the retina this retina come to form the optic nerve okay and the most superficial part of the nerve as we do from the scope and see is called the optic disc all right so look at this particular picture also this becomes your orbit this is the eyeball all right so your retina is within here it has a ganglion cells that once the ganglion cells come together they form what the optic nerve all right so the right and left optic nerve when they come together they form what you call what, the optic chiasma all right so uh before i finish i'll also let you know certain terms okay what is congruous what is anopia what is homonymous what is will brown's knee quadrantanopia and hemianopia all right so let's look at this particular picture okay which is which will serve a lot of purpose for you remember this becomes your eyeball and the retina is within the eyeball all right so the retina contains ganglion cells which come together to form what the optic nerve this is the Assuming it is your right optic nerve, that will be your left optic nerve, all right? So the optic nerves, the left optic nerve and the right optic nerve, they come together to form what you call the optic chiasma. What is, What does it do? It gives you three-dimensional vision. It gives you depth perception, okay? That's what the chiasma does, all right? And it is formed by the left and the right optic nerve coming together. From the optic nerve you have the optic tract okay this is the assuming it's your left optic tract this becomes your right optic tract so in continuation of that you have the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus that is where you have it here and apart from that then you have what in continuation you have the optic radiations okay we have superior optic radiations which are very true the parietal loop of the brain and the inferior optic radiations which traverse to the temporal loop of the brain then it ends up in what primary visual cortex okay which has an upper bank and what a lower bank okay an upper bank and lower bank but of note is the fact that the primary visual cortex okay has what uh macular representation but it is of so much importance that it has dual blood supply so that in case one shuts down either through trauma or stroke the other will be open and work viably for the macula to help you to see so what are they these are the posterior cerebral artery and then the middle cerebral artery posterior cerebral artery is found here and the middle cerebral artery is found over there if one shuts down the other work so that the macular representation around the occipital lobe where the primary visual cortex is found is always viable before we delve more into these structures and what they do i want you to concentrate on something very important now when we say congruous Congress. What's the meaning of congress? Congress means same quantum, same amount in the left eye and same amount in the right eye. That's the meaning of what congress. Same quantity, same quantum, same percentage 
of fibers that have been affected in the right eye and what in the right eye so that is congruous so if you hear incongruous it means that some percentage of fibers have been affected in the right eye but it is not the same percentage that have been affected in the contralateral right eye that is the meaning of what congruous and what incongruous now when you hear anopia it means that there's complete blindness in one eye so every part of one eye is gone it has shut down it is not seen that's the full that's the meaning of what anopia so when you hear hemi anopia it means half half of one eye sight is not there it's only one half which is seen one full half is not seen that's the meaning of what hemi anopia okay so when you hear quadrantanopia it means a quadrant or a quarter of one full eye sight is lost over there homonymous okay homonymous means same side homonymous means what same side if you take the right eye for example if you divide the right eye into two the right side and the left side and if you take the left eye into two the left side and the right side homonymous means that if it is the right side of each eye is the right side of each eye which is what affected now what is with brown's knee i'll demonstrate with brown's knee as i talk about the sketch in the subsequent uh discussion as i'm coming to do now okay so how are the fibers organized in each area if you have a typical retinal problem okay where the ganglion cells have been affected it does not respect the vertical nor the horizontal meridian what do i mean if i say it doesn't respect it means that it goes beyond it crosses over okay that is typical retinal problem all right if you have a typical optic optic nerve problem what happened to optic nerve problems the fibers within the nerve have been segregated into what superior fibers and inferior fibers in that case typical optic nerve problems are segregated into what superior optic nerve problems and inferior optic nerve problems so they always respect the horizontal meridian what it means is that they don't cross they don't cross the what the horizontal meridian okay now let's talk about um the right and left optic nerves assume it is your left optic nerve okay how is it formed it is formed by what fibers from the temporal ganglion cells and fibers from the nasal ganglion cells okay this is the left eye similarly in the right eye fibers from the nasal optic nerve and fibers from the temporal optic nerve okay so both of them form what the optic nerve okay so at the level of the chiasma the nasal fibers decassate or cross to the contralateral side is that right look at the color code the the blue has gone it has crossed over here but the red has remained at the same side okay it has remained axillaterally and this is contralateral or the cassation same thing here the red has remained nasal okay and it is the cassating of crossing to the contralateral side while the blue remains axillateral it does not cross at all there's something you should also know okay that there are certain fibers that are called with brown knee fibers the most infronasal fibers okay as they read the chiasma they cross over to the contralateral optic nerve okay so the most infronasal fibers at the level of the chiasma they cross over to the contralateral optic nerve these are called what? with brown knee fibers okay now so let's talk about the chiasma there are three types of chiasmas okay we have the central chiasma the preface chiasma and the postface chiasma 
The central chiasma is found in majority of the general population and is found in 80% of the general population. Whilst the preface chiasma is found in 10% of the general population and then the postface is found in 10% in the what the general population. Other thing you should know is that sitting on top of the chiasma are two major structures. One, the third ventricle, okay, and the hypothalamus. And then sitting under the chiasma is what? The cella testica, which contains the pituitary gland. All right? That's great. Okay, so now let's continue. So, in continuation of the optic chiasma is the optic tract. Okay? The optic tract. The optic tract is made up of two major fibers. Okay? It receives fiber, nasal fibers from the contralateral eye and the absilateral fibers from that same eye. Okay? So if you talk about the right optic tract, okay, it is made up of two major fibers. It receives fibers from the contralateral eye, which is a color coding blue here, and it receives fibers which are temporal, okay, from the same side, okay. The fibers that cross to the contralateral side, they constitute 50 percent, and they, these are the nasal fibers. 50%, 50, sorry, 52% of the nasal fibers cross to the contralateral side, while 48% remain as temporal fibers ipsilaterally. So, if you talk about the right optic tract, it is made up of 52% of the nasal fibers from the contralateral optic nerve, and then 48% of the ipsilateral temporal fibers from the same optic side of the optic nerve. So, here you are. Then, in continuation, you have what? The lateral geniculate nucleus. Then, we have what? The optic radiations. We have the superior optic radiations that are found within the parietal loop of the brain. And then, we have the inferior optic radiations. Where are they found? They are found in the temporal loop of the brain. In continuation of the optic radiations, what do you have? The primary visual cortex which contains what the macula okay with two major blood supply again we said that the optic nerve fibers are segregated to superior and inferior what it means is that optic nerve problems will give you they will always respect the horizontal meridian but when you come to the optic chiasma all right, the fibers are segregated into nasal and what temporal. Segregated into what nasal and what temporal. So, what it means is that at the level of the disc, okay, as we said, fibers are segregated into what superior and inferior, but at the nerve level, segregated into what nasal and what temporal. Okay, nasal and what temporal. So, at the chiasma level, segregation is into what? Nasal and temporal. What it means is that at the chiasma level, the field defect respects the horizontal meridian because the fibers are segregated into what? Temporal and nasal. And it continues like that until even up to the level of optic radiations. So, if you have superior optic radiation problem, the fibers will respect both the horizontal and then what? The vertical meridian. Similarly, if you have primary visual cortex problem, the fibers will respect or the lesion will respect both the vertical and what? The horizontal meridian. But generally, the macula will be spared. So one major difference between optic radiation problems and primary visual cortex problem is that the macula is usually spared in the case of the visual cortex problem, whereas it's usually affected in optic radiation problems. So, students, I will bring my lecture to an end here. Put down any difficulty that you have. Once we meet in class, we can clarify them. Until I meet you again, stay focused.